The Kunsteisbahn in Königsee, Germany, the oldest artificial ice track on the planet. We're here in deepest Bavaria for round seven of the FIBT Wiesmann Men's Women's Skeleton World Cup. And it is continuing to snow. It's been snowing now for the last couple of hours here in Bavaria. It shows no sign of letting up. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to some challenging conditions for our athletes. I'm Martin Haven, and I'm delighted to have alongside me again Olympic champion John Montgomery. John, this is going to throw yet another factor into the equation that nobody can really deal with. Uh, Kunikse is a really, really interesting track. It's got some unique elements that you don't find anywhere else in the world, for that matter. And Mother Nature is just having her way with the women uh, these past couple weekends. Last weekend in Oldenburg, and again this weekend here in Kunikse. Just not giving them uh, the good end of the stick, that's for sure. Well, interesting start area here. It's kind of been extended, so it is flat, steep, flat again. Yeah, a few modifications to the track here a number of years ago. Going into corner one, as they call it here. Idea is to miss the build up here, and then your entrance into the really unique labyrinth section here. S1, S2, you want to get high, and again up here to S3, you want to take the height and come around low for S4. Coming down what's known as the bend away, you take the hit on the left just there, so you can sneak by the first doodle and then the second into what we call BK before Kreisel. Coming through Kreisel here, it's a three pressure corner. You're at the bottom there, you're coming up and you want to be high just enough to get onto this first, what we call doodle. A second flat nod, nodule known as the second doodle. Coming into 13 and 14 here, a new corner at the bottom of the track as of two years ago, Echo Wand, and up to the final two curves, which is pretty much at this point a do nothing, lay there, hope that you've done the rest of it right, cross the finish line with the fastest time you hope. Do nothing, lay there at 75 miles an hour <laughs> with your head sticking out the front here. Yeah, Olympic champions tend to make these things sound so much easier. Well, Marion Thies of Germany holds the all-time track record, set in the World Championships here February two years ago. And Lindsay Alcock, the start record set in the previous World Championships here back in 2004. Marion Thies leads our World Cup standings from Great Britain's Lizzie Arnold on Yehuba tied for second spot. Katie Ulander with two wins under her belt. The American lies fourth ahead of Sarah Reed and last year's World Cup champion, Shelley Rudman, who I think has now given up chasing the overall title and is concentrating more on getting the World Championships right that start in Samaritz two weeks from now. Well, we've got a field of 23 sleds in our first of two heats, and that means that three will be merely interested spectators as we go 20 to 1 in the second and deciding heat. And John, the snow is not going to be the same for everybody, but it is going to be a factor for everybody, it would seem, and there's not much point fretting about it. No, nothing you can do. You've really got to concentrate on the things in skeleton racing that you can control, and really that's the execution of your game plan each and every race, and the elements that are beyond your control, like you said, there's no point in fretting about them because you can't control them. And the big word at the bottom there tells you all you need to know about the weather. What the ambience is is neither here nor there. The refrigeration will be on to make sure that the track doesn't soften but also that the snow doesn't harden too much and the athletes got to get on with it the coaches will be saying exactly the same and everybody in the new start building undercover uh, there's not much sprinting area outside uh, undercover but there is this big bobsleigh area at the top so you don't get snowy until you're actually racing no we're lucky our sleds are much smaller in space so we utilize a small area next to the start line and we get to take advantage of all of that area other that would have otherwise been used and uh, stored bobsleds at the beginning of their races so plenty of opportunity to get limbered up without having to worry about whether you're going to fall on your backside or not and that might be a bit, little bit facetious but of course fresh snow on a bit of tarmac is never going to be the grippiest of surfaces well two times a winner already this season Casey Ulender gets start draw number one top 10 in the FIBT rankings going to a random draw and previous track record holder Marion Teese goes off draw number four uh, Melissa Hollingsworth ahead of Lizzie Yarnold and Anya Huber. They're all tied together. Yarnold and Huber in the World Cup rankings, joint second, and they go next to each other. And John, possibly first out of the start shed, might get a slightly better swept track, but you can't imagine that anybody's going to get any better conditions than, than anyone else here. You never do know. It's a bit of a guess. Sometimes the first sled can be the one that has the toughest go. The groove isn't quite as good as when a couple sleds come down it. And uh, coming out of the groove there, you can see Katie Ulander edging her way just into corner one. Coming in a little bit early, actually. Stars 5.15, the record 4.96. 
That was set in some very cold conditions. Coming through the S-curves here, she gets pretty good height in S3, not quite as high as she might have liked to have been, but the ultimate goal is to come out of S4 straight. So you can take your hit just past the camera that you can't see in the video right now. But coming into before Kreisel there, and we can see what their waves and speeds are. 112.8, that's substantially slower than what we've been seeing all week from the girls and the guys for that matter. Well, one thing, big skid there as she came into the S's at the bottom. One thing that we've seen here that we didn't see at any stage is clouds of snow billowing up behind the athletes. First day that we've actually had snow conditions this week, and so the girls are going to be having to adjust their steers, and you can see Katie doing a pretty good job of fine-tuning things as she comes down the track, but she's not going to be anywhere close to the times that she was putting down in training. She would have been into the 52s and low 53s. She's about two seconds off that pace today, which we might see pretty consistent for the rest of the girls. Well, it didn't look like really major dramas anywhere, no massive skids, but yes, it's going to feel like you're in a totally different place. Here coming down and out of S4 into the straightaway, it's uh, it's very much not a straightaway at all. It's uh, very loosely turned. You can see the snow billowing up behind her as they're, they can only do so much to get it out of the track, but they take the hit off the left-hand side here, and bobsleds need to hit twice more to be able to get through this properly. Skeletons, they only need the one hit because we're that much smaller. The idea is to get through those next two bendaway parts without touching a wall and into BK. Can't keep a good woman down, can you? Katie, <laughs> you'll end up pretty stoked about that run. Let's see how it shapes up to the rest. Lucy Chaffer, one of the fastest starters on tour, currently ranked ninth in the World Cup. And Lucy ended first heat a couple of races ago in the leader's box, top three. Wow, 5.20 start. Really early into corner one there and getting a bit of a push down. Not ideal, that's for sure. Some of the athletes you'll see go late into corner S1. And that's the idea, to get up early and then down. Coming through S4, drifting a little bit right there. She's going to take a hit too far down the track and maybe not being able to get around the other doodle. No, she didn't. Well, nice flat line through Kreisel here so far. Kilometer now down on Katie Ulander and having to kind of rescue it off the exit of Kreisel as well. Those are some of the unique characteristics that we were talking about. The, the bend away that's not straight, the doodles after Kreisel. Really characteristics that you're only going to find here at the oldest ice bar in the world, in Königsberg, Germany. We can see where the forerunners have been down, that, that some of the ice has been cleared of snow. But if you drift offline, John, then you're in a world of hurt. First of all, you're taking longer to go around the corner. And secondly, you run into this fresh snow, and that just drags you back. It's true, and sometimes the best line, uh, the other athletes can't achieve it. So they're somewhere else where the snow hasn't been cleared yet, and you have a really perfect line that on a great day would have been the fast line. But you get into the snow, and you really get penalized for it. But Lucy Schaffer seemed to pick up a little bit of time here over Katie Ulander at the bottom of the track, and it might be because she had a bit better time with the exit of Kreisel here. And as you can see, she's going through the corner here, really trying to flatten out that line, but not do so much that she really scrubs her speed. She lets it go just enough to have a good exit after Kreisel, and that's really where the athletes are going to separate themselves from the field, is if they can have that perfect exit of Kreisel. Noel Piker's pace setting off almost the instant that the green light went to uh, allow her to start her run. And John, this is a factor often of a snow race. You'll go immediately, every second snow falls could be a second that it's causing you to slow down. When you hear that green buzzer go, you definitely want to put your sled down and give her berries because any second that you take, snow is accumulating and it's not going to be your friend going down the track. Nice exit of S4. See if she can have a little bit earlier hit than Lucy did. And she does. Barely gets by that corner. Little sticko. Two kilometers up in terms of top speed. Already, see if she can have a good exit of Kreisel here. Seems to get through okay, but she's really tapping her toes there, trying to dance around those doodles and get through. Well, she's still in the green. 1700s up. How much has the gap increased, if at all? Wow, that's she's a massive really margin. She's stretching her margin, for sure. 4400s up already. Wow, look at that. That is astonishing. Seven tenths of a second. That is not a small margin in any sport. I don't care what it is. And in skeleton, that's uh, a mile in terms of distance in front of her fellow competitors. Seven tenths of a second in the lead. And you, what you're going to find today also, and no disrespect to any of these girls here, we've talked about it before, the bigger girls, the heavier athletes are going to carry some momentum through this snow and not be impeded by it as much. But you can see here, coming through Kreisel, really letting it go, allowing her sled to run out, being brave is what it is. Coming from the roof, and she manages to stay off this bottom doodle there. You can see her sled sort of bending out. I think she's probably got some broad-spined runners on there today, which definitely plays to her benefit in a snow race. Yeah. 
She was working hard for that. Now, here's a woman who can normally find pace anywhere. She's our World Cup leader. And if these conditions are going to give anybody an advantage, you would think maybe the Germans, with more runs down here than anybody, would have a better idea of how to deal with it. Let's see if Marion Thies, the track record holder, can show us that she can. Nice short start. Better starts for her than, say, Laplong and Altenberg, where the last two races have been, because this is much shorter. She's only 1,700s back off the start, and that's the kind of margin that she can deal with. Four tenths, uh, that's sometimes insurmountable for Marion, but she does a good job of it week in, week out, with the deficiency on the start. Wow, look at the Looking control. forward to seeing what kind of speed she's generating here. Much better line through those bendaways than the other girls so far. 114.2. She's definitely going to be in the Noel Pikes pace area of 7 tenths lead over Katie Ulander. 2400s. Better line through there than Noel for sure. See if she can start picking away at some of that deficiency she's got. And she's not going to catch Noel unless she has a genius run through the bottom. Oh, she, she might closing. do it. She might get that 1500s. Here we go. Oh, not quite. Wow. But that's close. That's striking distance for a second run, especially when we might see some seizing up in the snow. Well, 12 hundreds of a second. If you run, if your runners drift through any patch of snow, whoomph, that's gone in a heartbeat. And you know what? Her lines were in some spots better than some of the other girls. She might have been experiencing a little bit of impediment by the snow that we haven't seen from some of the other athletes that weren't able to achieve the line she's been looking for. Great form going through Kreisel here, doing minimal amount of work to control those oscillations. Drops the toe, the, the German judo kick, as we've seen them execute at a couple of places, like we're talking about corner four in Altenburg. Well, she doesn't have the long levers overhanging that Noel does, so she was using the knee there as well for a bit more drive. Now, Sarah Reed of Canada. Now, talking about Noel Piker's space, our leader, probably the tallest woman on tour, and Sarah Reed, one, one of the one shortest, of the shortest, but yeah. this season, one of the fastest pushers out there, only narrowly being beaten out by one or two other athletes on a weekly basis. Let's see what she can do. 508, what a great getaway. Well, that gives us such an advantage. A tenth over Noel already. Doesn't have the same kind of weight that Noel will bring him down the track here, but she's going to have some nice lines. What she's got to do then is avoid the snow. Nice looking exit of corner four. Keeping that head down. Good hit. Oh, perfect line through the bend away. Really nice. Quarter of a second up turns into well, 113.6 of the cries. A little slower than Noel Piker's pace. A kilometer an hour down, but where's the margin? Good looking line through Kreisel. They're a little bit late off those doodles, but still very, very nice lines. I want to trickle through those like a stream down the bottom of a valley without touching the edges. Nine hundredths of a second could be close. Could be very close. What she got left in the tank? Oh, Three hundredths she leads. Nice work. Wow. Three one hundredths of a lead. That's it. That's really impressive. Well, the top three covered by 1500s. Fourth place, double race winner Katie Ulender, seven tenths of a second off the lead. And John, one of the factors of weather, we saw this last week in Altenburg, is it makes the gaps between the athletes variable and, and often a lot larger than you'd expect. Unpredictable as well. And, uh, you know, Sarah had a, a great look and run. She had, first of all, an exceptional getaway, really setting the bar here with her start being a tenth up over Noel Pika's pace at the end of the spur, or at the beginning of the first timing eye. 400, or 4, uh, point 0.4 kilometers an hour faster than Lucy Schaefer coming out of, the, out of the spur at the beginning of the race, and then really executed well on her way down the track. Well, next up, second of our three consecutive Canadians. This is Cassie Horesh, lying seventh in the World Cup rankings in her first ever World Cup season. Fourth place in Salt Lake City and in Whistler. World Cup rookie season for Cassie Horesh. Brandon Manitoba, my home province. Ooh, rough entrance into corner one there. Not what she was looking for. Missed the drift from left to right going into corner one. See what she can do through the S-curves here. They're a lot of fun to ride. Going up to the roof and down isn't a sensation you get too many other places else in the world. And really keeping nice low profile. Good form. You see the track workers jumping in right behind <laughs> the sled to try and sweep as much as they can. A little bit slower speed than Sarah Reed had there with 113.4k down. Doing minimal work to get through. Really high though and getting pushed off the wall there. Not the kind of exit that she wanted from Kreisel. It's really going to cost her some time at the bottom of the track here. 
you lose all your momentum. There's no a lot of there's not a whole lot of place to get that kind of speed back because it's quite flat and not a lot to do here at the bottom of the track. You're just sort of hanging on. Well, the speed has gone away from her, and she comes in fifth position, 54.98 slide. She'll know what she did wrong here. Really, it uh, mostly fell apart there at the exit of Chrysler, and so many athletes will be penalized with taking that small brush off the right-hand wall as you come out too high. Well, she was starting to close up into third place as she came onto the bend away. And the Chrysler, her undoing. You can see her coming around the corner here. You'll see her enter the view really high, taking that hit off the right-hand wall, getting pushed low. And that's not what she was hoping for here on the first time she's ever been to Kunikse. And I've been here a number of times and still struggle with that corner. It is one of my nemesis mm -hmm. out there in the world. Melissa Hollingsworth of Canada is next up. Former multiple World Cup champion. Three Canucks in a row. We'll see what these girls are up to. Pushing hard out into the snow globe that is this track. <laughs> Somebody's shaking it up just recently. 520, 1200s back of Sarah Reed, our leader at this point in time. It's a tough margin to make up on a 50 second track, Martin. It's not like some of the other tracks in the world where you're running around a minute. You're about 50 seconds here. A little bit slow today. We're going to go a little bit further to the right out of S4. It's not an ideal, but really sets her up for a nice line through the doodles there, the bend away. 113.9, faster speed by 4.4 kilometers an hour than our race leader at this point. And Melissa has always had really good results here in Koenigse. Great driver. Oh, bit of a brush there through the doodles. Not what she was looking for. Might cost her here at the bottom of the track, but she did have higher speed. Still within two tenths of the lead, drifting out a little. Into third spot behind Sarah Reed, her teammate, and Noel Piker's base. Fourth place, in fact, so she's behind Marion Thies of Germany as well. And uh, those knocks down in that lower labyrinth, John, that cost her two of those three tenths, probably. Absolutely. It's the, that was her undoing. Those small little brushes that you see at the bottom there, they really set your line off of. And when you're going off that last doodle late, you're sort of face planting into the next corner. You feel tremendous pressure as you come on, and then your time is essentially bleeding from that point to the fastest athletes that came through and, and didn't experience that type of a line. Sarah Reed of Canada leads here by three hundredths of a second from Noel Piker's pace with Marion Tace in third position. Melissa Hollingsworth just came down into fourth ahead of Katie Ulender, who is in fifth spot. And next up at the top of the track, the young girl who is still, well, she started in the World Cup last year, but this is effectively her rookie season, Lizzie Arnold. Last year's junior world champion. And multiple World Cup wins under her belt as well. She hasn't won a race this season yet, but she is second overall in the standing, so you know she's been consistent. 5'10", 200s back. She had such a breakout last year, she arrived with a bang. Four races, two wins. I mean, it's, it, was, it was a wonderful start. Oh, what an introduction. And she is one of our bigger female athletes on tour this year as well, so we should see her be able to carry some momentum through this Mother Nature affected snow race. Well, we can continue her baptism of fire. She'll join me in the booth to call the men's race tomorrow. Speeds way down from some of the fastest girls down the track, though. 111 is not the kind of speeds that she was looking for going into Chrysler, but a really nice line at the exit of Chrysler through the doodles. Six tenths of a second back at the moment. One of the two races she won last year was Heavy Snow in Samaritz. And Heavy Snow does not seem to be playing her very well here. You can see how much slower she looks. She's going to struggle even to get up to the top of the track. Coach doesn't look too impressed with that. Not the number he was hoping to see when she crossed the finish line. Eight at this point in time. Yeah, if you took a zero off and she was 11 hundreds back, she'd be, they'd be fine, but she's 110 hundreds back, 1.1 seconds, which is not what she wants. Walking up much further than some of the other athletes. Coming out of S4 here. Might be some of her undoing there with a slight skid coming out of that corner. Really working hard to find her hit on the left-hand side there, right around the camera that is just out of our vision on the on the camera right there. And a bit of a hit out of Echo One. The idea with that corner is that you've really got to get your pressure further around so that you can come out on a straight line to those final two corners. And what it wants to do is pull you back to the right-hand side for a hit. Lizzie Arnold and Anya Huber here are tied for second in the World Cup rankings. Both yet to win a race, both with one silver, one bronze medal so far out of the season. And the difference between them is that uh, of their worst results, Lizzie's was a ninth, Anya's is an eighth. 
Well, you might have just seen an opportunity to capitalize on here with uh, having seen her fellow competitor go down with an eighth after her name. And Anya's got lots of confidence here. She's won races in the past. World champion here back two years ago, I believe. Of course, this is home for her. She is a Bavarian. She lives just up the road in Bischofswiesen, where the TV crew are staying. So if anyone knows this track in this weather, this is the girl. This is where she got her start, for sure. She understands it better than anybody. Looking for that hit on the left-hand side there. Really nice line through the end of the bend away there. Should have some good speed here. 112.6, little bit down. The snow might be starting to accumulate in the straightaway for some of these later starters. Seven hundredths of a second becomes nineteen hundredths. Oh, she gets it all wrong. Got that hit there, and that is definitely going to cost her time at the bottom to the race leaders, and she will not. She might be closer to Lizzie Arnold than she was wishing when she started. That has probably cost her any chance of winning on home ice. Four to thirty-three hundredths back. Yeah, that is not going to translate well unless there's some. Um, Bizarre miracle with the weather for Anya Huber in heat two. 3,300 is a tough margin to make up on this track, one of the shorter tracks in the world, and only running around the 54 second mark today. Well, there's 1,500 covering the top three, but she's nowhere close because of this, John. Oh, she caught that just out of our camera sight there. She caught the first uh, doodle on the left there, pushed her high, and caught the belly of the second doodle. And really, that's where uh, it fell apart for her. With only 3,300 3, deficit at this point, she would have been right there with our race leader at this point. Well, little grin, but uh, I think that was a little forced. A little grin, a little consolation, I think, yeah. at this point. Anya Huber not pleased with that run. Kristen Bromley holds the sled, I beg your pardon, it's Richard Bromley holds the sled for Shelley Rudman of Great Britain, last year's World Cup champion. And race winner here in Koenigsegg. Yep. See if she can have a repeat performance. She's looking for one. I know that uh, she's really battling hard for that result that has been eluding her. Last week in uh, Altenburg wasn't what she was hoping for either, I don't think. No. Feeling a little bit better. She was feeling absolutely vile in Altenburg last week, and she said, I'm feeling fine in my head, but the body is just like jelly at the moment, that post-flu thing you get, so... Well, you so. want to be calm in skeleton racing. Let's see if that plays to her advantage here. Big skid like Ooh, Lizzie Arnold no. and another. Horrible. First execution of S4 so far. It looks like she was really lacking some grip there. 110 and the slowest speed coming down the straightaway. She will not be repeating here this week in Koenigsegg, unfortunately, for Shelley Redman and crew. This might be another one where she wishes she'd stayed in bed. Half a second back. Well, very different sled for the two British girls. Lizzie Ra Yarnold on a Black Rock and... Shelley Rubman on a Bromley, different runners, probably completely different setups as well, but the result, not for either girl going well. And you know that she had it in her, being only a half a second back with 110k, which is almost four kilometers slower than the race leader at this point, and that really uh, poorly executed S4, she could have been within contention yep. had she done everything else right. Coming around uh, S4 here, you can see where she really starts to break out. Skids left, skids right, and she was going for that hit. Just couldn't get what she was looking for, and really no control down that straightaway there. And that might be runner choice, and that might be a bit of the snow conditions as well. 11th of our starters in this field of 23 is Michelle Steele of Australia. Another girl who may get right down into single digits. Well, Lindsay yeah, Alcock still got the start record here, and that was done with two-handed start. Miss uh, Steele here is the only one still utilizing that style. But there's no reason why you can't have start records, as Lindsay Alcock's proof still holding on that straight. 5.15 getaway. The two fastest starts have been 5.08. Sarah Reed of Canada, Anya Huber of Germany. One leads the race, the other one bitterly disappointed, I think. Bit of an early bump, but she really held on to that and navigated that bend away quite well for having that hit so early out. And 113.1, she's back to where some of the other athletes were in the 113s for speed. Quite high out of Kreisel. And a bit floppy through the doodles there, but I think that she might be able to hang on to some of this momentum that she had going into Kreisel. Well, she started fourth fastest, got up to third. She's slipping away, though, six position on splits at the moment. Is she going to finish in front of Katie Ulenda? She does, just by six hundredths of a second faster than the American girl. Drops a couple spots. That could be due to the fact that she is so slight, probably coming in at the, the lightest of any of the athletes on tour here. 
definitely the slightest athlete in the field today, and that's where the, the athletes that get most profoundly affected by inclement weather conditions, both rain and snow, are the ones who really can't carry the momentum through it and really push through that snow. Well, particularly when you get up high in those S's at the bottom of the track, you're onto a lot of thick snow there, so she was up in those areas. Next up, Janine Flock of Austria. No commercial break in this run, and I'm sure they won't be in the next unless there's a miracle and it stops raining or snowing, rather. So everybody is in a real hurry-up offense mode. The moment the green light goes, you've got to be ready to rock off the top. Get her done. Quite an early load there. She wants to probably take a couple more steps over that crest to get as much momentum going down on the start as possible, but a really good quick getaway at 5.12 seconds. One of the things I think about her in the last two seasons is how much the athleticism has come on as she's left her teens and started her 20s. It takes female athletes a lot longer to develop that real power than it does for, for males. I was wishing it was just the opposite. I was hoping I was just going to be getting into my, uh, my prime years, but it's probably not the case. I think you probably are. <laughs> nice line through Kreisel here, keeping it fairly low. Let's see what she can do at the exit. Ooh, getting that bottom hit there on the last doodle and getting uh, some substantial pressure going into the corner just after Kreisel. She's going to continue to drop placings here and a bit of time to the race leaders. You can almost feel yourself decelerating coming up from corner 14 to the finish line. It is uphill, but if you've had some problems before that, you can just feel the pace is so much slower. Yeah, somebody's pulling the brakes on and you don't know who. <laughs> well, I could find that guy. Yeah, oh, I ought to. Janine Flock then of Austria comes down in 11th place. She had some really good training runs this week. You can see her just a bit high coming out of Kreisel there and a bit floppy. Some of the other athletes that you see have a good execution of that Kreisel there will just sort of slip right by that first doodle and just by that second one, almost making it into a straight line. That's the, that's the execution that you're looking for. Next up, girl who made her World Cup debut in Altenburg for Germany last week, Sophia Griebel. The uh, silver medalist in the Junior World Championships at Eagles just before Christmas behind the young Russian sensation Yelena Nikitina. We might have seen some first World Cup jitters or some nervousness from her last week in Altenburg. She's got it out of her system now. She can go, she can do her job, get it done, do it as she knows it. Chatted to her and Marion and Frank Rommel and Yulia Eishorn, his uh, fiance, at a function on Saturday night, and it was already history by then. She's a very calm and composed young lady. Well, you need to be in this sport. It's so, so cerebral. You got to think your way down the track, and after the start, it's not as physical as it is mental. Nice and high through S4, one of the few German girls that's got really high in there. You can generate some speed by getting high in those corners, and really fantastic line through those bendaway curves. Well, she only started 11th fastest. She's already up to fourth place. 113.6, only the second fastest speed we've seen as opposed to uh, Marion Thies there. And beautiful, another line from a German athlete through those doodles after Kreisel. Up to third. She's ahead of Marion Thies at this stage on the track. And she's going to be bringing it home here hard. 900. Second she may be place. crossing this line. Can Sarah Reed hang on? Or will young Sophia Greenball oh, take it home? Oh, she fell back. Drifted away in the final corner. She must have found a little clump of snow to put the brakes on. It was just after Echo won there. She hit on the left-hand side. That small brush going uphill caused her enough of a loss in momentum to be able to drop back two one hundreds before the finish line. And it was just that small skiff. I promise you that's where she lost the lead. Otherwise, she would have been carrying that speed from the bottom. You're just on the left-hand side. Watch her as she comes off this corner. Doesn't get quite high enough towards the end. She's dropping. And right here, skiff. That's where she lost the lead. Yep. Kicks her off and then drifts her out towards the snow. She comes down in third place. 1100s off the lead. We've got a Good real her, race on our hands. She'll be able to fix that on the second go here. Now here's another big, powerful athlete. If Maria Oliver can get some lines here, this could be a chance for the Russian girl to really shine. And again, her starts are getting better and better as the season progresses. And her coach is home track as well. Willie Schneider's probably got more runs down this track than almost this entire female field combined. Yeah. Nice quick start. Late as Willie likes into S1 there. Bit early into S2 though, pushing her low there. She was almost too high. Oh, and much too low through S3. 
not going to have the same kind of speed, but she is already 300s up. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. I should be watching the Russian lines. No, she came down from 600s to 300s. 112.4, good speed, not quite as good as we've seen from our top three. Is she going to go behind? Yes, by a margin. Oh, and wild Ooh. as well. Yeah, that wild ride through the doodles there. We're not probably going to see the same type of drama that we've seen Kunikse produce in the past here. Exit of Chrysler seems to be a lot more forgiving, but that was one of the nicest exits from Echo One, the last, uh, the bottom corner. Except her left runner was going straight through fresh snow. That's why, because she executed it better than almost any of the other girls there. Not the run that Coach Willie was hoping for, yep. but some really uh, some bright points, if you will, in that run and some of her executions. Well. First half of the track down to Kreisel was great. The second, couple of mistakes. Getting a little bit high there out of Kreisel there. Pushes her low, hits the belly, and goes flippy floppy through the doodles here. You're going to see probably some of the athletes go, uh, what are the doodles? Because every nation mm -hmm. seems to call those yeah. unique corners something else. But the Canadians, we refer to them as the doodles. Well, you saw Vili Grimace feeling every knock <laughs> of that. And next up. Another of our Russian athletes, Olga Potilitsina. Now, she was away training uh, last week, didn't race in Altenburg, and has yet to produce the form that won her the first race of last season in Eagles, Austria. The Ruskies swept the podiums in uh, both men's and women's last week in Eagles. They were preparing for next week's competition. And Olga trying to bring some of that momentum and confidence that she gained last week in Eagles here to Kunixe this week. Eagles is clearly a track that suits her. She's got a good start. A little bit low through corner S3 there into S4 coming out on the right-hand side. You can see the track workers jumping in just after her to get to work on the track as she zips down the bend away, fighting to keep that sled straight. 111.4 for speed, not what we've seen from some of the top competitors, and she's going to be losing time here out of Kreisel to the top field. Wow, four tenths of a second down. She's gone from fourth to 11th. But with a good exit of Kreisel there, she should be able to maintain positioning over some of the athletes that didn't have quite the exit that she did. Back up to 10th in front of Katie Ulander of the USA. Back down to 11th, Olga Botilitsina. Seven tenths back. John, one of the things we're going to see when she comes out onto that bend away, she's hard on the right and again through virgin snow. And that means it's going to be deep and sticky and holding her down. Indeed, indeed. She's going to be, uh, the runners are going to be held up, uh, impeded, slowed down. Not what you want. And when you see snow in front of you, you're like, oh, I can't, I can't get away from this stuff. We've got no steering mechanisms on our sled to be able to avoid it. And you just got to apply some pressure. And in the bend away there, sometimes just as subtly as turning your head towards the left to take that left-hand wall hit to get you around the, the rest of the bend away at the bottom. Well, Catherine Eustace next up for New Zealand. And as the athletes are running closer together in terms of time because of the weather less time for those replays now let's see what she can produce 37 year old kiwi and still one of the fastest starters look at the blur of those feet <laughs> really quick this year i think she's got to be really happy with her physical conditioning and some of her competitiveness is uh, competitiveness on the start nice line into s1 here Gets enough height to have a smooth transition over into S2. Really nice high line in S3, but a bit right out of S4. See her take her hit. This is a better angle there, giving you some of the idea of what that bend away actually looks like. 113.4, same speed as Sarah Reed, our race leader at this point. Let's see if she can get through Kreisel nice and easy. Ooh. Ooh. I was going to say at 5'9 and 70 odd kilos, she's got height and weight on her side. Still only 8 hundreds of a second off the lead. She's still in second place, and Eight that's all gone. 38. Wow. You can see where that speed all went there, right at the exit of Chrysler Martin, just completely backwards. She was close. Oh, my goodness. She's to gone from 8 hundreds to 7 tenths back. What could have been a top three finish ends up being 10th position, and that's all because of that little labyrinth section below the Chrysler. Well, and sometimes what happens is you're so close to getting it right, it's uh, worse than doing it even poor. You can see she was so close to being just off that wall far enough to avoid both of these doodles, but she clipped it with her bumper by the smallest of margins, and it sent her low, hitting the one on the left and then back to hitting the one on the right again. Well, she was a fraction of a second off a perfect steer, which would have seen a second. 
She's now 10th. Now, here is our junior world champion, Yelena Nicotina. One World Cup race to her credit. She finished 10th in that on her debut. So the Russians have certainly got a big star in the making. Well, that was Winterberg, a starter's paradise in decent conditions. Wow. What can she do here? Did she ever run that deep? Yeah. She gets a bit more muscle on her 5-12 start for her. She gets a bit more powerful. You're going to see another Trechikov on the women's side of things. Well, Nikitina, 20 years of age from Moscow. And you've got to believe that in another 12 months, she is going to be where the Russians are looking for a medal. Ooh, not very much control coming through the bend away there. Really skidding sideways. She's not going to have the speeds that we'll see if from some of the other athletes. 111.2. Already going to be starting her, tr her trend towards the back of the bus. She's not the tiniest of athletes. She looks fairly slight. 5'7". She's uh, 57, 58 kilos, about 125 pounds. Eight tenths back, and that's not going to get any better before the finish line here. Wow. She got within a hundredth of a second of the lead, and she comes down in 14th place. And John Montgomery, some of that is just lack of experience on this track, never mind in these conditions. It is. It's understanding what to do when you get into a situation that's not ideal. And what she did was overreact. And that's, that's the worst thing you can do in the sport of skeleton racing is overreaction, doing too much. You've got to really be subtle. And if we see her come down the straightaway here, She's doing way too much. Steering too hard, getting that leg way out. And when your spines are sideways like that, you may as well be coming down on a pair of hockey skates and doing a hockey stop because that's engaging into the ice the wrong way. She's not too disappointed. Her second World Cup, she's just happy to be here, maybe. Yeah, well... Getting a shot at the big leagues. She is enjoying herself, that's for sure. <laughs> Raise the roof. Next up, Joske Leconte of the Netherlands. 25-year-old athlete. Good starter, bigger athlete. We can see if she can carry some of this momentum. She's fairly familiar with this track, too. I believe they do a little bit of training here. Best results so far this season, 11th place in Whistler. Smooth lines through the S-curves here. Gets a little bit higher than some of the other athletes did through S3. Working a bit hard to stay straight, coming through the bend away here. Ooh. A little bit late into BK before Kreisel and one of the slower speeds at 109.2 coming into Kreisel. Working hard on the exit to try and get the line right. You can hear that quite clearly and it's all kind of fairly wild down the bottom. Dragon toes and you can hear her helmet skipping across the ice there with that left hand wall hit at the end of Echo One. Well, it's hard to imagine any other places that it could have gone worse for Joska Lacan. She finishes two seconds off the lead. 18th place, tail of the field at the moment. Don't forget, three sliders will not get a second heat. At the minute, the bottom three are Joska Lacan and tied Janine Flock of Austria and Lizzie Arnold of Great Britain. Here we're coming through Echowan, the final bottom curve on the track. We've got two above this, but she's down way too early. The momentum comes back, takes a solid hit there on the right-hand side, coming out of that corner and loses even more momentum towards the bottom. Punches you off into the snow there. That's a double whammy, isn't it? No wonder she looks a bit crestfallen. Well, next up, Lelda Pujelana of Latvia. Made her World Cup debut uh, last year in Altenburg, and that was a snow race as well. You can hear her getting pumped up. The idea in skeleton is that you want to get amped up at the start so that you can take as much advantage of all the adrenaline and energy, but then you've got to flip that switch. As soon as she dives on the sled and coming out of that spur, you want to be calm and zen-like. Maybe a little too zen there for little Dave there, hitting on the right-hand wall before the first corner. That immediately puts her a quarter of a second back from the leaders. Really nice line coming out of S4 there, smooth. That's the kind of line that you want. You want that B line for the left-hand wall. So you take your hit and you move away from it and get through the bend away with as little effort as possible. A little bit better speed than Joska Lacan's, but three or four kilometers now down on the fastest. Really nice navigation of uh, Kreisel and the exit of Kreisel. Some of, uh, I would consider one of the better lines through there of all the athletes. She didn't have the speed, but it's a really good driving so far. 18 spots. Just in front of Joske Lecant. And that's where she remains, 55.7 second slide. And her coach, Dennis Dukors, is here this weekend. Of course, looking after his two sons as well. 
Not quite the uh, the Duker-esque run that uh, her countrymen will probably execute tomorrow. But uh, first year on the World Cup, I think it's in, a, in its entirety. Yeah. And uh, she'll be really the, the future of the Latvian program on the women's side, for sure. Yeah. Well, she, she is the past, the present, and the future, isn't she? <laughs> she only. is it at the moment, yes. as far as World Cup considered. Yeah, she only did the one race last year in World Cup. But she certainly showed potential. She's had one really good run and one, yeah. Now then, here is Maria Mazlou of Romania, bronze medalist in the Junior World Championships a few weeks ago behind Yelena Nikitina and Sofia Grievel. So all three women from the Junior Worlds are competing here at World Cup Standard. Really powerful athlete. Here's the type of track that you can get away with doing a little bit less. She tried to do that last week in Altenburg and didn't uh, make the, the first uh, cut. She was the only athlete not to get a second run. But here in Kunik say you can do a little bit less and get away with it. We'll see if that plays to her advantage here this week. So far, looking pretty good coming through the S-curves. Only two tenths back. Ooh, but a little bit of a hit there on the final bend-away curve. And only one ten for speed. Really letting it fly through Frazzle there, getting high and a bit loopy. And ooh, back in the day, that would have been one of those scorpion hits. The end of Kreisel this year is playing a little bit easier. Not quite as dramatic as it has been in the past, I think. She did get up to ninth place out of the S's, down to 18th spot at the moment. Trying to hang on to get that second run this week. And she may make it. She has two sleds behind her. So Maria Mazalou ahead of Lelda Priagelena and Jos Gelaconte, who definitely looks in trouble in the drop zone. And Maria pretending that uh, she meant to do that all along. <laughs> Part of the game plan. Yeah, yeah. Well, it just shows that, you know, the more the snow falls, the more difficult it is. Really high, really late there coming out of Kreisel. And in the past, it's been much squarer, if that's a word. And what it's caused the athletes to do is completely flip over. Last year, that's where Martins Dukers on the men's side flipped on his back and got an astonishing fifth place finish. Not a lot of athletes can flip on their back in a race and get fifth. Switzerland's Marina Giordoni has just recently, in fact last week, won the Swiss Championships, sprinting away from her rivals at St. Moritz. Making the transition from bobsleigh to skeleton where she can use her sprint skills to her advantage here. Wow, 5.03. 5 Fastest getaway we've seen of the day. Let's see if she can hang on to this lead that she's created for herself at the top of the track. She's already opening up a margin down into the S's. Really nice lines through the S-curve. She should still be somewhere around the lead. She's tied right now. Couple tied. hits there. She is going to lose that margin. And unfortunately, you can hear the crowd. They know what not to do through there. And you got the ooh from them. You know you're in trouble. And the speed wasn't great. 108. That's not going to help her at all. She'll drop down. Maybe. Oh, my goodness. She's gone from second to 19th. Can that be right? That can be right. When you have a line like that through the bend away, that is exactly what you can expect. Well, she'll be lucky if she's got the momentum to make it to the finish line. Never mind up the hill. Mickey Grunberger coaching the Swiss. She's on the bubble right now. She's got to hope for some lackluster yeah. performances from those who are coming after her. Well, she has just dropped Joska Leconte out of the race. And for Joska, that's a big disappointment. Really powerful starter, though. And if she can get her brain wrapped around what it is to drive a skeleton sled, she will be a force to be reckoned with on the Women's World Cup Tour. She's a double junior world champion in women's bobsleigh as a break woman. Looking towards the world championships. Ooh. Yeah. The expression on coach's face there lets you know exactly somebody what just transpired. Somebody was pulling his fingernails out of <laughs> shot. Well, she's in the race at the moment. What will her teammate do? Barbara Hosch may be the one to push her out. And she and Dahlia Ivas of Romania who remain. Working hard. Get on that sled and drive it there, Barbara. 5.5 seconds compared to 5.03 of her teammate Marina Giordoni means that she's had an awful lot of work to do in this next 1,200 meters of ice. Barbara's familiar with this track. She's been here, she's been sliding a number of years now, and she gets it. Let's see what she can do for execution. 
Certainly not the worst bend away we've seen. No, she should be pretty happy with that. Should be around 110 for speeds coming in. 110.2, there you go. Well, now she might start to pick up some spots. She was 22nd at the start. She remains in 22nd place and still there. But a nice good exit run. of yeah, good Much less drama. Let's see if she can stay off this left-hand wall. You can see her trying to hold the line. Really nice job of that, holding the line at the end of Echo 1 there. Still 20 right seconds. Will she make it into Come the race on. by the line? She doesn't, I'm afraid. 2.2 seconds back. Really handicapped with that start of hers, but she did have a really nice run. I think Barbara can be happy with, uh, with her race today. Nice lines. Of course, going to the World Championships on home ice in Samaritz. There's all that comfort, but also there's all that distance to race on. It's true, and she can really take advantage of the familiarity with the track and the extra distance. You can see her hanging on to the end of this corner here, the bottom of the track, to try and get enough height to drop down the middle. And she does a really nice job of it. Well, the first 50 meters of any track are her worst enemy, and the more meters after that, the better she likes it, I think. No question. Final slider then in our second heat, Delia Eva, our uh, first heat, Delia Eva of Romania, trying to make it into heat two at the expense of Marina Giardoni of Italy, who currently lies 20th in the field. Delia didn't make the cut last week. 550, she's got her work cut out for her. Yes, she does. Almost four tenths of a second deficit over the one person she's trying to chase to knock him off the bubble. Really nice line through the S-curves. Good exit. Oh, she's going for the crazy line. She's trying to steer all the way through the bend away. Nearly impossible, but she did a half-decent job of it. 110 for speeds. Not going to be your fastest line through there, but if you can swing it, not too bad. Last week tried to do nothing. This week she's trying to do everything. <laughs> She's still in 20 seconds. She's in front of Barbara Hosh, but she is not yet in the race. And she is running out of ice very fast indeed. Hits the bump. Still 20 seconds. She's not going to make the race. Marina Giordoni can start breathing easily again. 56-3-1 slide. And that leaves her just ahead of Barbara Hosh. Top and 20 moving on. Yeah. Top 20 will go through into Heat 2. They will not be joined by Delia Ivas, Barbara Hosh, or Joska Leconte. Coming out of S4 here, she actually has a pretty decent line there. You can see her staying calm, staying relaxed. What she did wrong was she started to steer around the corner there. She should have just gone straight, taken that hit, and really tried to uh, not go for the luge line. Actually, in luge, what they do is they don't take any hits. They come right through that bend away without touching a wall. Bobsled skeleton, we don't have that level of control. We've got to take that hit for the most efficient line. Well, well, well. Sarah Reed of Canada leads this race after the first of our two heats here in Koenigsegg, Bavaria. She won the season opener at Lake Placid, a real driver's track. She leads Ooh. here, but it's not big. Three hundredths of a second in front of Nell Piker's pace. Sophia Griebel of Germany and Marianne Thies, both within a fraction over a tenth of the lead. We're going to see a lot more racing before we find out who's going to take the gold medal here at snowy Koenigsegg, Bavaria. Well, Olympic champion John Montgomery watching the interest with interest the action and praying that he doesn't wake up to a white Christmas style uh, day. But it's so close that top four. And you know, in these conditions, can you count out Anya Huber and Melissa Hollingsworth for the medals? Not at all. Only being three tenths back on a day like today with the snow on a track that is as tricky as uh, the exit of Chrysler can prove to be for some of the contenders. With the pressure on to have a repeat performance for your second run, anything can happen. We might see some really significant leapfrogging here on the second go round. And you'll have to stay with us to find out who will come out on top of the heat. Join John Montgomery and me, Martin Haven, for the second and deciding run here. Koenigsegg, Bavaria, round seven of the Wiesmann FIBT Women's Skeleton World Cup. And in the meantime, why don't you head to FIBT.com to find out more about the girls and the sport.